Okay, I'm going to be doing a gear video on the gear I took along with me on my Appalachian Trail through hike. I just got back about two weeks ago. I really haven't touched my backpack except for taking some of the clothes out to wash and stuff like that. It's just been sitting in the corner uh, doing nothing. So uh, I'm going to talk about the big four, which is your uh, backpack, your sleeping pad and sleeping bag, and your tent. These are the main items that consist of the uh, largest amount of weight that you're going to have to make the decision of what to carry. Uh, your backpack, it's one of those things that when it's empty, it's whatever weight it is, it's, not, it's never going to change. You know, unless it's got water on it for some reason like that. Uh, your sleeping bag, your sleeping pad, again, you can get real light, but you're going to be spending money on it. Uh, tent, same thing. They have light tents out there, but it's going to cost money in order to get lighter and lighter and lighter. So let's get right into it. Backpack. I use the uh, Osprey Exos 46, which it's about two pounds, two ounces when it's empty. So that's pretty, pretty light as backpack goes. Uh, they have lighter ones out there. I saw people with like Cuban fiber backpacks, uh, which is super light, it's supposed to be water resistant, all that. This really did the job that I wanted it to do and what I was looking for. It's got a frame and a mesh back on it, and it's got that airspeed uh, suspension, so you're supposed to have air circulation. And actually, I ended up having the uh, backpack slung pretty far off my back, so when I had the hip belt attached, that was the game to eat. It actually sat pretty far off my back, and you know you kind of adjust things as it goes, as you go along. But for the most part, I found that little sweet spot, and it ended up being off my back a little bit. It kept me upright. It kept my shoulders back. I felt like I had good posture, and I uh, had no like shoulder pains or anything like that. And it was like the perfect distribution between my hips and my shoulders. So the Osprey Exos 46. Loved it. Would definitely recommend it to anybody who uh, was interested in doing a through hike. And the 46 liters was, uh, to me, just enough size in order to fit all my gear. And even if I had to add a couple extra things, not a big deal. So next, let's go to the tent. I kept it in the back pocket here. This is the Henry Shires tarp tent. It's the moment. So it's got one pole that goes across the uh, tent widthwise, so not head to toe, it went side to side. Um, unfortunately, I did not like the tent. I started out liking it. Uh, small, it's like just the right size, it's kind of compact, it's light, it's only two pounds, two ounces or something like that, and that's really what I was looking for. And unfortunately, when it would rain, and it was pretty heavy rain, it would come up underneath the tent it would bounce up underneath the uh, tent wall and come up through the mesh and into the tent. And it happened regularly. Towards the end, I just got so agitated by it, I started sleeping in shelters. All through the 100 mile wilderness through Maine, I didn't stay in my tent a single night. I slept in the shelters. And one night I stayed in the tent. But really irritated me. Um, I, would, I would pick a different design or a different tent altogether. A lot of people had success with the Big Agnes uh, seat house, and I believe they've got a platinum one now, it's like 500 bucks, but it's in the one pound range. So depending on how much money you wanna spend, you can get a really light tent, but just be real careful with what you pick. If you think that something's gonna go wrong, most likely it will. And I kinda saw that you couldn't lower the tent wall all the way to the ground in order to prevent that splash under. I, used to, I would stick trees, tree branches towards the end under there to try and prevent the splash back. Didn't, didn't always work. So next up is the sleep system. So we'll start with the sleeping pad, which I use the Firmarest NeoAir all season. It was new when I bought it. it I think it just came out and it's got um, R value, which is the um, ability for it to insulate, and it reflects your body heat back onto you. I believe it's got like aluminum in there or something. 
Awesome. Absolutely awesome. This was one of those things that you sleep on every night. There's not a, a day you spend out there, whether you're in a shelter, I guess if you stay in a hostel or you stay in a hotel or something, you're not going to use it. But anytime you're out on the trail, you use it. So, so worth you investing money in this, in my opinion. Uh, it blows up to about this thick. Um, super warm. On my coldest night in uh, Virginia, is it Virginia? No, it was Tennessee. Run high knob. 19 degrees out, I was toasty. My sleeping bag kept me warm, and this kept me warm from the ground. Something to think about. It's gonna get cold on some days, and when it was warm, it wasn't an issue. You could always let out, which I found later on if you let out some of the air, your butt end up, ends up sinking into it a little bit. It's a little bit more cushy. I used to blow it up all the way, and it was rock hard. Uh, so you could play with it to get that perfect kind of fit. So the last one, which is again, this is probably gonna be your most expensive piece of gear. It's your sleeping bag. Again, you're gonna be in it almost every night. I even used it when I stayed in hostels and hotels. I got so skeeved out by a hotel in North Carolina that I slept in my sleeping bag on top of the bed. I was just so skeeved out. Love this thing. This is my Mountain Hardware Phantom 15. It's rated down to 15 degrees. And if you guys don't know the rating system, because it says 15 degrees does not mean you're going to be comfortable at 15 degrees, you're going to be alive at 15 degrees and just very cold. So be aware that uh, the number is not your comfort by any means. So on, my, on the 19 degree day, I had my thermals on, uh, I think I had my, even my jacket on, I had hats on and stuff like that, but I was still, I, I was able to sleep through the night. You know, you could feel like the little spots where the, the cold was coming in. Uh, weighs like two pounds, two ounces, 2.4, something like that. Everything in my big four was two pounds and a little bit of change. I don't think anything was over two and a half pounds. So, I mean, if you add it all together, uh, be liberal with the weights, it was probably around a 10 pound uh, base weight. So, not that bad. Sleeping bag. So that's it for this one. Uh, next up, we're gonna do clothing. So if you're interested, stick around and check it out.